As we get closer to Christmas, one of the things that I look forward to, at least with my family, is to be able to have some good time to play some board games, some good board games over these holy days. And uh, one of the games that uh, I actually got rid of it because it's, uh, it's caused a lot of trouble in our family, we're very competitive, um, is uh, maybe you've played the board game Risk before. Do you know which game I'm talking about? The, the game of global domination, where you're, uh, you, you uh, try to take over the world, right? A number of players play and you have your armies, you roll your dice, and you try to strategize and conspire and make alliances and break alliances in order to be the one, the last one standing at the end, to be that final dictator, that one who conquered the whole world. This game is a terrible game because it lasts forever, sometimes takes hours to play, and, uh, and you can lose friends over it as, uh, as you break alliances and turn your back on people, betray them. It's a, it's a great game, but, uh, but it's, it, it's a dangerous game. Imagine this, especially anyone who's ever played that game. Imagine this. Um, you're playing with, with your family, and things are going really well. You're having lots of fun. But, uh, but you, start, you start losing countries. You start getting smaller and smaller. And finally, all you have is one country in the whole world. Your one country and your little army in that country. Um, your other family members, some of them are doing really well, some of them kind of medium, and some of them are kind of the same size as you. The game's at the point where there could be some big changes. People are going to be kicked out of the game. They're going to be conquered. And so you're there with your one little country, your tiny little army, which is nothing, right? And you have a few neighbors around you and uh, some of your siblings. And for them, they're kind of small too. But then maybe your dad and, uh, and, and one of your cousins are doing really well and they're really big and powerful. So your, your siblings say, why don't we team up? Uh, none of us are doing very well. Uh, there's all these bigger uh, players around us. Why don't we make an alliance and say, we won't attack each other, but we'll help each other so we can get, we can get, get some of our power back. You think about it, but you're very hesitant because your siblings have already broken their promises to you several times in the games. You're very suspicious of them. You don't know, can I really trust them? At some point, they're going to they're gonna attack me, um, just like they maybe did before. And so you're in this spot where you don't know what to do. You're kind of desperate because you're so small. You have to do something, but what will you do? Here's your options. Um, if, if you want to take that risk, you can trust your, your, your siblings and, and say, okay, let's make an alliance and we'll see how it goes. You can do that. If you wanted to, if you're really sinister, what you do is you go to one of their enemies, one of the bigger guys, and say, hey, I'll help you and we can attack them and defeat them, right? If we team up, we can go against them. That would be pretty, uh, pretty sly if you were to do that. Or you could just say, I'm just going to stay neutral. I'll take my chances. Um, I'll defend myself, and whatever happens, happens. As you're thinking about what to do, you're mulling over it, and you're going back and forth. Your siblings, they get annoyed, and they're impatient. And, uh, and, and so they decide they're just going to attack you. <laughs> you're not making up your mind, so they're going to attack you, and at least uh, and they can see what happens. And so in that moment of panic, as you see them coming, you, you make the decision to do that kind of backhanded, kind of evil, sinister move of going to their enemies and align, aligning yourself with them. And as you do that, that big superpower, maybe your dad, who's got this huge uh, army, he comes in, wipes both of them out with your help, but then he doesn't just stop there, and he keeps going, and you're done as well. And he wins the game, the game of risk. It's all over, uh, you lost. Bad move. I bring this up, I hope you can follow, because this is something like what happens in, in the book of Isaiah. This is kind of the situation where Judah is in with King Ahaz. Um, they are surrounded. They're the little guy. There's a few other little guys around them. And they're saying, hey, why don't we team up? We can, we can maybe defend ourselves. We can hold our own, maybe if we stick together. But in the midst of that, um, Ahaz receives this message from God. He receives this message um, through Isaiah. What is he supposed to do? The message is, is, is to be neutral. To be neutral, not to make the alliance, and to, 
to trust God, to be neutral, to trust God that he would deliver them, he would defend them from their enemies. And then there's more. And Isaiah says that a virgin will conceive and bear a son. Kind of a strange thing, especially that second part, right? The first one, just be neutral. God will defend you, right? You can on your own, but God will protect you. And then this little thing of a virgin conceiving and bearing a son, which is an impossible thing, right? A virgin can't bear a son. That's kind of the, it's, 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 it's impossible. But yet this is the whole point. The whole point the, uh, maybe of this message is that nothing is impossible with God, right? Even a virgin can conceive and bear a son. God can do the impossible. For King Ahaz, he hears all of this, right? Considers all of it. The attack comes, he panics, he makes that alliance, and it does wreaks havoc upon Judah. It wreaks havoc upon his country. It's a complete and utter disaster. He didn't put his trust in God. He didn't trust in God that he would deliver him, he would protect Judah, but instead he went with his own genius. He went his own way with his own skill, and it didn't work. It didn't work at all. It was disaster. Now, with that in mind, listen to St. Joseph, because in many ways he's in a similar situation, but he acts in a very different way than Ahaz, the king of Judah. For Joseph, he's in a really tough spot. The pathway isn't clear. There's no clear, easy like solution or, or clear path to a good outcome. He, uh, his wife, Mary, is now pregnant, and this child is not from him. If others find out, she will assuredly, she will be stoned to death. That's the punishment according to the law. And so for Joseph, tough spot. If he divorces Mary, which is one option, she might be discovered. They might figure out why he divorced her. For sure they would. And and she would probably be killed. But if he stays married to her and continues on, it's quite possible that others will still find out. And, And now he will be implicated as well. That not only will they kill Mary, stone her, but he could be stoned to death as well. What will he do? He's in a really, really tough spot. The message that comes to him is pretty much the same message that came to Ahaz. The message was trust in God. The angel comes to Joseph in his dream and tells him to take Mary as his wife, that this child is from the Holy Spirit. And then Joseph is given, in a living way, the sign that Isaiah gave to Ahaz. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Mary, his wife, has conceived a virgin and, is, and will bear a son. And this for him is a sign that God can do impossible things. That even if you can't see the end, even if you can't see like a clear path for how all this is going to work out, um, to trust in God, that he will lead the way, he will go before you. What will Joseph do? He could run away. He could come up with his own plan and try to see if his own genius could find the solution. It didn't work for Ahaz. But instead we see in Joseph, we see the yes to God. We see Joseph's trust in God. He takes Mary into his home. He continues in his marriage. And he trusts God with everything. He takes that jump. And God does not disappoint. The lesson today that I want to draw out from these readings is the importance of trusting in God in all times, in easy times, but especially when things are not clear, especially for us when maybe all we can see is that next, that first step, but we can't see the second, third, or or any further, but to trust God and to take that step that is before us with him. He is with us. He will protect us. He will help us through whatever difficulties come. And for Joseph, many difficulties came, right? He had to follow God out of Bethlehem into Egypt, into this foreign land. He had to leave behind his his construction business, his carpentry business, all that he knew. It was very difficult. It wasn't easy. But God was with him at every single step. And he trusted, entrusted everything to God. 
I just want to share with you uh, this past week, um, and some of you uh, join with me in, uh, in uh, going to a Christmas lunch with, uh, with, with the Sisters of the Poor at uh, St. Stanislaus Hall, just, uh, just next door. And what they were putting on was something so great. It was a Christmas lunch for the poor of Hamilton. And so maybe for the past month or so, they've been inviting different people and telling them about it and uh, encouraging them to come. And when the day came, they went out with some others and actually with vans, like to pick people up and to bring them so they could have a Christmas, a good Christmas lunch. For many of us who went uh, to help them, it was such a good time, right? It was really good. A good time to share a meal with, 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 uh, with some people who we didn't know. A good time to get to know them. A good time to have some fun, to sing, to pray, to share stories, to do lots of good things. But it didn't have to be this way, right? Um, it could have been a complete disaster. It's, it, it's a tough thing, right? When you bring all these strangers together who don't really know each other. What are they going to do? What are they going to say? Is it going to be awkward and weird like we might experience sometimes at our family Christmases, right? Or is, is it going to go well? Is it going to be fun and enjoyable and good? For me, uh, a little suspicious going, right? Uh, I, I shared with you uh, a few weeks ago, uh, someone stole my bicycle, right? A poor person stole my bicycle. And going over, thinking of that, right? Like, was it one of these guys? I have the video. Uh, was it one of these guys who stole my bicycle? And maybe for them coming too, right? And they see this priest and they look and say, who is that priest, right? He, he has this big fancy church. He lives in this big warm house. Um, can I really talk to him? Can I relate to him? For us, maybe there's many things that, that could have blocked that communication and that friendship, but it didn't. We're able kind of to, to see through that. And I think it all starts, the foundation is just a basic trust, a basic trust that for, on both sides, we each wanted to feel valued and respected. We didn't want to be ignored or pitied or thought small of or little of, but we just wanted to be there on equal footing to share, uh, to share this Christmas lunch together. Just two little things then uh, that jumped out to me. They, I don't know if they exactly relate to the message today, but, but they've really made me think afterwards. One of them, I, I was chatting with, with, with one person, and uh, yeah, this is a poor person who has nothing, right? Nothing. And, and he was telling me, Father, like, um, I don't know why God loves me so much. How does he love me so much? He's, he was telling me how he feels so blessed that, that God gives him and provides for him, and uh, he would love to suffer more because he sees many other poor people suffering a lot. And from his side, as a person of faith, he would say, I would love to suffer more, to be closer to Jesus, but, but God doesn't let me. He doesn't let me. He gives me things, and I give them away, and I try to be super generous, um, but he just keeps blessing me and giving me more and more things. He was so happy to share with me, even though he really has nothing, just how blessed he feels. Sometimes when I'm complaining or when we're complaining, it's, uh, for me anyway, it's a great reminder and a good lesson. Another thing that happened, uh, the sisters got some bigger prizes, and so they had this, this raffle, and they gave out little tickets with the numbers on them, and everyone got one. So for these bigger prizes, I was at a table for the meal and, and with, with, with some other people, and, and the guy across from me, he wasn't really paying attention as they were calling out the numbers. I said, come on, don't you want to pay attention? You might win. And he said, oh, Father, I never win. I never win anything. He was kind of sad, right? So I don't know why at that moment I was inspired just to say a quick prayer. So I said, Lord, please let him or this other guy beside me, let one of them win one of these prizes. And as soon as I said that, the very next one read out the numbers, and it, and it was their number, right? One of the two. It was their number that was read, and they won. They won a big package of, like, the Lindor chocolates. I was secretly hoping they would share them with me after winning, but uh, instead they took them to share with other people, which is great which is great. So again, these things that um, help us to, to place our trust in God. The point today is just simply that, that living in trust is the way that we want to live our lives. Living, trusting in God, and entrusting all the good things and the harder things and the things that, that there's no clear path or easy answer to. Entrusting them all to God. God is almighty, 
why would we ever doubt that he can do even impossible things? God is our Father. Why would we ever wonder if he really loves us? God sees everything. Why would we be so set on our own little plans, on our own little ingenious ideas, and think that what we have has to be the very best? God sees everything. In these final days of Advent, let us strive to trust God more and to entrust everything to him.